I, Yemi Oshibajo, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yemi Oshimbajo seems to be facing trying times these days, even as his job seems under threat. Now, this follows speculations that several powerful political forces are working to boot him out. Now, Oshimbajo has to decide whether he's going to stay and fight for that office or resign honorably. In order to make that decision, he has to consider these factors. In the past few days, the powers of the vice president has been steadily whittled down. President Buhari has asked Oshimbajo to seek approvals for agencies under his supervision and moved the Social Investment Program, SIP, to the newly created Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, headed by Sadia Umar Farooq. Also, the Economic Management Team, chaired by the Vice President, has since been replaced with the Economic Advisory Council, headed by Professor Duni Salami. There are also rumors Oshimbajo has been barred from representing the president at functions. Now, this many see as rendering the vice president redundant and could be a good reason for Oshimbajo to consider stepping aside. Though the presidency insists that the sack of 35 of Oshimbajo's aides is simply an overhaul of the government to reduce cost, now many can see this move as actually a ploy to reduce the vice president's influence. The VP reportedly has more aides than the president, as at 2017, Oshimbajo had 88, while the president just had 25. With shrinking staff strength, Oshimbajo seems less capable of carrying out his duties, which further reduces the effectiveness of his office. Political permutations for the 2023 presidential elections may seem to have finally come between Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo and the APC national leader, Ola Ahmed Tinubu. It is well known that Tinubu was instrumental to Oshimbajo's emergence as vice president. However, speculations that Oshimbajo may enter the presidential race has made him a fierce competition to Tinubu's 2023 presidential ambitions. This is perhaps a reason Tinubu is yet to publicly comment on the afflictions of the vice president in recent times. Being very influential in Nigerian politics, losing Tinubu's support could prove detrimental to Oshimbajo's longevity as a vice president. While politics is quite unpredictable, how many heavyweights from the Southwest are willing to back the law professor against the godfather of Yoruba politics, Bola Ahmed Tinubu? Oshimbajo has recently come under heavy criticism by the Afeni Ferry, who accuse him of not speaking out against crimes by headsmen in the Southwest, as well as other issues. However, on November 9th, the Yoruba Council of Elders advised Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo against resigning his position following his perceived relegation. Would the Vice President heed the advice of the Yoruba Council of Elders, or considering his dwindling support from the Southwest, go ahead and resign? Hallelujah. Beyond being a professor of law, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo is a revered pastor of the redeemed Christian Church of God. The Christian Association of Nigeria Khan recently spoke against the seeming relegation of Oshimbajo's office, while his church, the RCCG, has thrown its weight behind him as well. While this may sound reassuring, could this be taken as a continued support from the Christian Church? On October 28, 2019, President Muhammad Buhari jetted off again to the United Kingdom on a private visit. As he has done in the past, the President failed to transfer power to Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. For this reason, the President's Chief of Staff, Aba Kiari, jetted off to London on Monday, November 4th to get the President's assent on the Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contract Act. This further fueled the narrative that the office of the Vice President has been relegated. Now, according to the Constitution, the President is not required to transfer powers to the Vice President unless he will be away on vacation for more than 21 days. However, on August 31st, 2018, the President traveled on a working visit to the United Kingdom and he handed power over to Oshimbajo even though he was traveling for just 16 days. 
It was while Oshimbajo functioned as acting president that he sacked the director general of the Department of State Services, Lawal Dara. Probably to avoid a repeat of this, the president has chosen to invoke his right to hold on to power while away. This can be seen as the strongest indication that Oshimbajo is no longer useful in the Buhari administration. And many say this could also be a good reason for him to step aside. Under Nigeria's constitution, the vice president takes over the number one seat if the president becomes incapacitated, dies, resigns, or is removed from office via impeachment. Now we all know that President Muhammadu Buhari has been plagued with several health issues since his first tenure. His documented medical trip since 2015 when he assumed office till date is six, including his 104-day trip to London in 2017. So, treatment I can receive. Um, I couldn't recall ever being so sick uh, since I was a young man. With the president currently away to London on a private visit, his state of health has once again become a source of concern. The greatest fear of the cabal is a repeat of the Erdogan situation, and this is probably the best play for Yemi Oshimbajo. Now, we all know the All Progressive Congress has been plagued with various crises since before the elections. While some may dismiss the Oshimbajo relegation as mere party politics that would resolve itself in due time, it is known that APC scuffles often produce casualties. An example is the Kogi primaries where Mustafa Muna Audu was edged out last minute to pave way for the emergence of Yahya Bello as Kogi APC flag bearer. Though the party sorted itself out, Audu lost out on the Kogi governorship slot. Now, if Professor Shimbajo is about to become the sacrificial lamb, his options may not be far from resignation just to save face. I am extremely honored and proud to be here today to perform the commission of the... While it appears the vice president is carrying on his daily routine with little regard to the crises surrounding his office, we all know that Oshimbajo is certainly in a dilemma. As an Austin law professor with an in-depth understanding of the law and constitution, clearly his days are occupied with weighing his options. Will Oshimbajo resign, or will he patiently weather this storm just as former President Gulag Jonathan did when he suffered the same relegation in the hands of the Eredua Cabal? Things, however, worked out in Jonathan's favor as he was pronounced acting president in January 2010 by the Sixth Senate following President Musa Eredua's death. The office of the vice president is looked at as a very exalted post, and many expect Oshimbajo to fight for it, just like Atiku did when he faced a similar opposition from President Olusegun Obasanjo. Meanwhile, Oshimbajo's critics like former aviation minister Femi Fadi Kayode have continued to mock the VP as seen in his recent tweet, which reads, I have no sympathy for Oshimbajo, and I do not think any southerner middle belter or christian ought to either he's a disgrace to odudua to the south to the church to christendom and to god as speculations about oshimbajo's fate continues to dominate political discussions it is very important for everybody to note that politics is very unpredictable the vice president could be drawing closer to the end of his political tenure in this administration or he could rise from the ashes to leave this country whichever way Nigerians watch to see the outcome.